DemocracyNow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Militants from the Islamic State stormed an air base in northeast Syria Sunday, capturing it from government forces. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least 346 Islamic State fighters and more than 170 members of government forces have died since Tuesday in the fight over the Tabqa base. Fighters from the Islamic State have seized three Syrian military bases in the area in recent weeks. This comes as the Pentagon considers expanding its airstrikes against the Islamic State in Iraq to include targets inside Syria. On Thursday, General Martin Dempsey, the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, hinted at possible intervention against the Islamic State in Syria. This is an organization that has an apocalyptic end of days strategic vision and which will eventually have to be defeated. To your question, can they be defeated without addressing that part of their organization which resides in Syria? The answer is no. We, that will have to be addressed on both sides of what is essentially at this point a non-existent border. Um, and that will come when we have a coalition in the region that takes on the task of defeating ISIS over time. Dempsey spoke two days after the Islamic State posted video showing the kidnapped American journalist James Foley being beheaded. Foley was captured in Syria in 2012. Meanwhile, another journalist who'd been kidnapped in Syria, Peter Theo Curtis, has been freed after two years in captivity by the Nusra Front, another militant group in Syria. During an interview Sunday, General Dempsey told reporters once he determines the Islamic State militants in Iraq have become a direct threat to the U.S. homeland, he'll recommend the U.S. military move directly against the group in Syria. On Friday, Ben Rhodes, President Obama's deputy national security adviser, also raised the possibility of U.S. strikes inside Syria. We will do what's necessary to protect Americans and see that justice is done uh, for what we saw with the barbaric killing uh, of uh, Jim Foley. Um, so we're actively considering what's going to be necessary uh, to deal with that threat, uh, and we're not going to be restricted uh, by borders. We've shown time and again uh, that if there's a counterterrorism threat, uh, we'll take direct action against that threat if necessary. Meanwhile, in Iraq, officials say suicide bomber targeted a Shiite mosque in Baghdad today, killing at least 12 people. This comes three days after at least 68 Sunni worshippers were suspected members of a Shia militia attacked a mosque in Diyala province. Officials say a suicide bomber blew himself up in the mosque during Friday prayers and gunmen fired on fleeing worshippers. To protest the killings, two prominent Sunni politicians, Iraq's parliamentary speaker and deputy prime minister, pulled out of the talks to form form a new and more inclusive government. To talk more about the crisis in Iraq and Syria and the Middle East overall, we're joined by Vijay Prashad, professor of international studies at Trinity College, author of several books, including Arab Spring, Libyan Winter, and most recently, The Poorer Nations, A Possible History of the Global South. Vijay Prashad is also a columnist for the Indian magazine Frontline, where he's been writing extensively about the Islamic State. He was last in Syria three months ago. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now!, Vijay. Um, talk about what is happening right now in Syria. President Obama is back from his vacation, uh, the discussion of striking inside Syria. It's interesting that the United States is thinking of striking inside Syria at this point. The question is, to what end? I mean, now the Islamic State has taken a major airport outside Raqqa. It's a military airport. It has them, you know, they have now MiGs in their possession. They have so-called man pads, surface-to-air missiles. But that's really not what they're after. What they're going to make a move for is to go towards the airport of Hama and the town of Hama, which will cut off Syrian government control over the entire western flank of Syria. So they have a very interesting territorial ambition to create a, a big zone, a, a crescent, as it were, from Tripoli in Lebanon all the way out to uh, northern Iraq. That's their game plan. It's very unlikely that U.S. airstrikes will be able to stop their, uh, their march forward. It will halt them. It will make them change direction. For instance, the United States struck recently to protect U.S. ally, you know, the Iraqi Kurds. They struck right outside Erbil, hit the 198 howitzers that the Islamic uh, uh, State had taken from the military base in Mosul. So when they did that, the Islamic State turned around and went back towards Raqqa. In other words, 
they are playing a kind of territorial land battle. They are not going to be stopped fundamentally by airstrikes. One tactical mission can be halted, then they will redirect. That's the way they've been playing at it. If you're going to defeat the Islamic State, it is going to have to come on the ground. It's going to have to come through Kurdish forces, through Iraqi forces, through Syrian forces. And currently, that is not something people are talking about. There is a belief in the great silver bullet of American aerial strikes. And I'm afraid, you know, that's very pleasant to hear because it sounds like the Americans are doing something, but it's not really strategically useful in the long run.